bells ringing, diamonds bling, carol singing, famous singing. Hey guys, welcome back to Kim's Farmhouse Live. This week we have a what's for dinner and you're going to come along with us to see what we are making. And tonight we are going to make Italian sausage pasta with red lobster biscuits. And so I thought I would just uh, let y'all know that this week our what's for dinners may be a little bit different. My husband is starting a new job and you know I keep it real with y'all. So there will not be a grocery haul because I'm going to use what we have here in the house because you know how it is sometimes when money's tight, you gotta make things work. So, I have a bunch of sausage that we bought from this boy here who was selling it with the band, no, with the FFA, sorry. So tonight we are making, yeah. <laughs> tonight we are gonna make um, the Italian sausage pasta, and then tomorrow I believe I may make some kind of a chili using um, sausage. This week there may be quite a few recipes using sausage. So, anyways, we are gonna get started. So make sure you subscribe, press the like button, turn like. the post notifications on, and comment if you like this video. Don't dislike. Let's get it. Okay, right. y'all, I have a little over a pound of sausage here in the pan. I'm going to add one onion that I chopped up. Yes, that she diced it. So we're going to put that. We are going to be showing you our ingredients we'll show in, you those a second. in just a minute. But what we want to do first is um, stir that in. Yeah. Brown this meat. I'm gonna throw a little salt and pepper in it. Um, I know that the sausage has some uh, flavoring already in it. Salting. So it, it doesn't hurt to. Um, are you recording yeah. it? My daughter is actually recording. So I'm recording. normally I have it just sitting here. So we're gonna let this brown, and I will show you the rest of the ingredients that we're gonna use. You will need one and a fourth a cup of water. You will need. Um, 14 ounces of a can of diced tomatoes. Which we're gonna use this uh, basil, basil garlic, garlic. And oregano. You will need a cup of tomato sauce. Which is eight ounces, which is what this can is. Um, a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Mm -hmm, we have here. Eight, yeah. <laughs> eight ounces of penne pasta. Yeah, and this is the penne regatta or something. I'm using a little over eight ounces because I think it's a little bit smaller than what we were supposed to use. A half a cup of mo shredded mozzarella. This was frozen, so it looks a little funny. And a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese. Yep. So, we are gonna get this meat now brown. we're gonna add all of the ingredients. I have drained the fat off of this. So I'm gonna put one and a half cups of water, my 14 ounce, can of diced tomatoes, an eight ounce can or one cup of tomato sauce, a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, I'm supposed to add eight ounces of penne pasta, I have a little over eight ounces. <clears throat> And I'm also, let's see, I'm going to throw a little garlic powder in here. And another thing that I do sometimes, I have done before when I've made like a sauce. I don't make sauces very often, but like when I do goulash or something, the tomato sauce and stuff sometimes will have a little, not bitter, but you know how tomatoes are. So I'm going to throw a little bit of sugar in here, just, just a little. Only about a half. Eh. There. And what it says to do is um, bring it to a boil, and then we're going to reduce the heat to simmer and cover it and let it cook for about 16 minutes until the pasta is done, and then we'll put the cheese on top of that. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Be right back. Okay, y'all. It is now boiling, so I'm going to turn it down. Let that simmer. I'm going to cover this now. I've never made this before, so I hope that it's good. Now I'm going to set a timer for 16 minutes. And then I will come back and let y'all see the next process. 
Okay, y'all, it is done. I'm gonna pour it into this dish over here. biscuits back here done. I just put the garlic butter mixture on top and we will show you everything on the table. Okay y'all, got it out of the oven. We got our biscuits and we will try it and let you know what we think. Okie dokie. Let's see. What do you think Bryce of this? I think it's good. Really good. He said it had a little spice to it. I'm thinking it it's just a sausage. Like Something like you won't taste it. It's kind of in the back of your mouth, like an aftertaste almost. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's great. Okay, Courtney must like hers. Look at that. She's eating it. What do you think about it? I like it. I think it's pretty good. I started eating mine. I think it's pretty good. Adrian, how is it? Good. But Honey, have better. you tried it yet? The roll is better. Too hot. It's too hot. This roll is made better. Well, I think it's pretty good. I'll let you know what my husband thinks in a little bit. Hey y'all, I am gonna make the best chocolate chip cookies I have ever had. <laughs> this is the recipe that I use every time we make chocolate chip cookies. I cannot remember where this recipe came from, but I have it wrote down in my little book. And so I thought I would include that in this week's What's for Dinner. This dough has to set up, uh, like it says to refrigerate it for 30 minutes to an hour or longer before you bake it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the mixer to cream the Crisco, which what you'll be using is a half a stick or a half a cup of butter flavored Crisco. Oh no, actually a whole cup, my bad, sorry one cup of butter flavored Crisco, and it's very important to use butter flavored. I used original Crisco once, and it did not taste as good. So there's something about that butter, butter flavor that really makes these cookies so good. So, I'll throw that in here. A cup of regular sugar. I was gonna double this recipe, but I didn't have quite enough um, eggs. And then I need a cup of brown sugar. This is a half, so I'm going to do one more. So, I'm going to cream this up. to make sure I don't get any shells in there or even worse, a bad egg. I've had that happen before. I need to add a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of vanilla. gradually add the flour stirring by hand but what I do is I just turn my um, mixer on the stir function and I just slowly add it in so I need three cups of unsifted flour <laughs> semi-sweet chocolate chips, whatever, I mean, you could use milk chocolate or whatever. And I'm just gonna do the same thing, just kind of on the stir function, and it will start kind of bumping, but this is how we do it, and it's worked out. I'll kind of stir the rest up by hand now. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this up, put it in my refrigerator. Right now it's almost one o'clock, so what I'll do is I'll just leave it in there until I get back from uh, taking my kids, or picking my kids up from school. And then I will come back on here and we will start baking them. And y'all, this is the best, like I said, the best chocolate chip cookie dough recipe I have found. I won't even try to make a different one. I won't even try a new one because this one's so good. And like I said, I don't, I didn't invent this recipe. I just found it somewhere and I do not remember where. So. Okay, y'all. Our dough has been chilling now for a couple of hours. And um, I have this neat little, I don't know what you call this little thing, but I use it when I make cookies. It's kind of soft. This side's smaller. This one's a little bit bigger. And it says to roll these into like little one inch balls. Um, I just kind of play around with them because I always forget what size to make. Sometimes I end up with bigger and sometimes smaller. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna make this first batch about the size you see here. And um, once they're done, I'll see if they're too big or not and then I'll adjust accordingly because I always forget. Put these in the oven. It says to bake for seven to nine minutes. I'm gonna put them in there for. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put them in there for eight minutes. Check them and see how they are. Okay, y'all. There's the cookies. Courtney, what do you think? We have more baking, but this is the first. Maybe. First two dozen. Maybe. They're so good. Yes. And I love them when they're warm like this. I definitely recommend y'all try this. Yeah. Ooh, these are yeah. amazing, and they ended up cooking about eight. Maybe nine minutes. Okay, y'all. Tonight we are making uh, sausage. Ground sausage, chili, and cornbread. Yeah, ground sausage, chili. I have a pound of the same sausage I used, a little over a pound of the same sausage I used last night, which is the blue and gold sausage. Then I have a pound of Jimmy Dean original sausage. I have one large yellow onion that I've diced up. And I'm also going to add four cloves of garlic, which half a teaspoon is supposed to equal one. So we're going to put four of these in. I'm almost out. And I will be showing y'all what you'll be needing for this recipe in just a little bit. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead. I know there's seasoning in here, but I'm going to go ahead and season this with a little salt and pepper. Just kind of put it in my stew put in there. And also, um, I'm gonna cook the sausage um, a little over around medium because I've noticed last night I cooked it slower and it turned out really good. If you cook it fast, it gets hard. And so, I'm just gonna kind of slowly cook this first. And what you're gonna need for it is you're gonna need some chili powder, um, two cans of tomato sauce, some diced tomatoes. We got diced tomatoes and These green are, chili. Yeah mild and original it called for mild but i had that's what i had it called for stewed tomatoes so we didn't uh have that so we're doing crushed you need some oregano leaves light red kidney beans and pinto beans so yeah okay so i will come back in just a minute and show you after i get the meat okay y'all i have the sausage done and i'm gonna add in the chili powder I need two tablespoons of chili powder. I need two teaspoons of salt. And two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of oregano. And then I need to add, uh, it called for a 28 ounce can of stewed tomatoes, but I didn't have it when I went to the store. I couldn't find any, so I just got crushed tomatoes. I hope that works. I'm gonna make it. Um, also, two cans of, it says mild Rotel, but I had one mild and one original. I'm just gonna make it work. And it calls for one can of tomato sauce. Um, a 
15 ounce can. I have two eight ounce cans, so I'm just gonna use those. So we'll have a little more tomato sauce than what it asks, but I think it'll be just fine. I'm gonna let this come to a boil, and then I'm going to uh, cover it, turn it down and cover it, and let it simmer. So that's what we're doing now. I'm gonna sprinkle whoa, a little bit of cumin. Whoa, that may be a little more than a cute little bit, but maybe fine. I like cumin, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. I'm gonna add in the beans. I have a can of kidney beans and then a can of pinto beans that I had to strain and rinse. So, whoa! <laughs> I thought it was splashing more. Now I'm gonna let this simmer for probably 10 more minutes and then I think it'll be good. And then we will show y'all the finished product. Okay, y'all, got it ready. Got some sour cream and cheese. We've got some cornbread, also some crackers. We will come back in a minute. She's right, starving. Courtney. I'll let you know what we think. How is it? Do you like this? Mm -hmm. I think it's good. It's different because I've never had chili with sausage. What do you think, Bro uh, not Bro mm -hmm. Adrian? What do you think, Adrian? Good. Is it good? Crackers. Do you like it, honey? <laughs> and there's mine. I have cornbread with Bryce. mine. Bross is hoping at a basketball game tonight. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. And we're going to have a lot, it looks like. <laughs> hey, y'all. Tonight we are going to do leftovers of the chili. But, I don't know, the seasoning was a little bit off, so I... I added a package of the McCormick chili seasoning, and I have this on low. I'm just gonna cover this up. I'm just gonna let this simmer on low, and then I'm gonna show you what else I'm making. Okay, y'all, I'm out here on my back porch. This is our pellet grill. We have a Traeger grill, an older one, and we bought a new one called a Bighorn, and I've showed this once before, but it has pellets in here, and that's what you cook your cooking with but anyways what I did was I have um, some potatoes I uh, poked them with a knife uh, rubbed olive oil and salt on them and wrapped them up and put them on here earlier y'all should have seen it I had the smoker on and I turned it up too quick and I had flames everywhere but anyways we're gonna do like a potato bar and I'll show you in a little bit okay y'all we have the chili, which I showed y'all a little bit ago that I added some more seasoning. So we're gonna try it out tonight. I think it's just because it had sausage and I'm just not used to sausage in a chili. Made a bunch of baked potatoes. We have some green onions, some sour cream, some bacon bits, cheese and butter, and Fritos tonight. The packaged cornbread that I made last night had no flavor whatsoever. But anyways, we're gonna get it all plated up and I'll come back, of course. Hi, right, Adrian. How is that potato and chili? Good. Do you like the? He's not feeling so well. Mm. Bryce, good. what do you think? The chili is the bomb. Dot com. Really? How's the chili's better tonight, isn't it? Since I added that other flavoring, do you like it better, Courtney? Yes. And these baked potatoes. It's hot. Mine split mm. in, in uh, two pieces. This is good, y'all. Look at my baked potato. Mm, I'm about to tear into this, y'all. This is a very good, easy meal. I just threw these on the grill. Within an hour, they were done, and I have extras, so tomorrow I know what I'm gonna have for lunch. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all. Welcome to tonight's What's for Dinner. Tonight, I'm gonna be making shepherd's pie. My good friend, Courtney, from Mama Makes It Happened, recommended this recipe. I got onto my Instagram account today, which is Kim's underscore uh, farmhouse life. Um, anyways, I got on there and was asking for recipes using ground beef. And a couple of people actually recommended shepherd's pie and Courtney sent me a message and told me how she made hers. And so I'm just making a variation of that. I'm not gonna include um, any vegetables in the actual pie, which is what she does also because I have some picky kids and so I, I just, Felt like I could do it this way and so I'm making it <laughs> I'm making it similar the way she said she did it was the ground beef cheese and mashed potatoes so I have a pound of ground beef here um, that I'm going to brown and I have an onion that I've diced up I'm also going to add some minced garlic I'm almost out 
So I'm just gonna use everything that's left in this little jar. Probably two, maybe a couple cloves of garlic left. So I'm just trying to get what's in here. I probably need that'll actually get it out. I also have um, peeled up some russet potatoes and diced them up, which I have back here in this other pan. And I'm actually fixing to salt that and turn it on because I forgot, I thought it was already on. So I'm just gonna throw a little salt in there. And also on this meat, so we got that turned on. This meat here is starting to, sorry, starting to brown. So I'm gonna throw some salt in here with it. And like I said, I'm not sure what seasoning she uses in hers, but I'm just gonna make mine this way. And I think you could do it however you like to make your meat. So. I'm also, I read some uh, different things on Instagram, not Instagram, sorry. I read some different recipes on Pinterest, so I'm kind of adapting it the way I want it. Um, I'm going to add some thyme, because I've seen that some people have used that. I think I'll add a little Italian seasoning. I don't know, it just sounds good. <laughs> We're going, oops, I dropped something. So I'm going to be browning this, and I will come back in just a few minutes and show you what I'm going to do next. Oh, by the way, my oven is preheated, preheated to 350. So I've got my meat still cooking. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, tomato bouillon with chicken flavor. Oops, I'm trying to get it where y'all can see it. I'm going to add a little bit of that. Okay, y'all, I added another half a teaspoon of that tomato bouillon stuff. And in the meat, this meat is not really too fatty, so I don't really have to, um, I don't think I'm gonna have to really drain it. I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna also add some ooh, Worcestershire sauce. I always say it wrong, probably. I'm just gonna, I don't know. I'm just putting some in. I don't even know how much. It smells really good, y'all. And this is just, like I said, um, my friend Courtney gave me the idea of how to make it, and then I'm just kind of adding my own seasonings, and I've got my potatoes back there boiling, so when they're done, I will show y'all how, um, how I mix up my mashed potatoes, and then we'll assemble this. I'm also gonna make some corn, just from a can, and mac and cheese, because I haven't actually made that in a while and the kids have been wanting it, so we're just making regular craft macaroni and cheese, so be right back. Okay y'all, I have a two and a half quart casserole pan. I hope this is not too small. I think it's gonna work. I have my meat done, so I'm gonna pour it into the bottom. I think if I make this again, if we lock it, next time I'm gonna make it with two pounds of meat. Um, so we may not have any leftovers of this, but y'all, I normally have my onions a lot smaller. I got a chopper from Pampered Chef, uh, or it's a Pampered Chef chopper that my mother-in-law gave me either this Christmas, this past Christmas, or the Christmas before. Anyways, I never use it, and I wasn't paying attention, and I used it today, and I didn't cut my stuff as small as I normally would. I have some uh, cheddar cheese here. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle this on top of the meat. That's Courtney says she does like layers. I think she does like a layer of meat, cheese, potatoes, and then maybe another layer of meat, cheese, and potatoes. My daughter thought it was going to hurt. Um, I think that's maybe how she's doing it, but I don't have enough to do that many, to do the layers like that. And I may have misunderstood her. She may not have said it that way. But that's how we're going to do this. So I'm going to let the potatoes finish, and then I will show you how I make my mashed potatoes and how we're going to assemble the rest. Okay, y'all, I have my potatoes done. I'm gonna take, um, I usually use more butter than this, but we're almost out of butter. But I have a half stick of butter in here. I'm gonna start mashing these. And, uh... Okay, I think those are mashed.
mashed pretty good. I'm gonna add some sour cream. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt and pepper. That. <clears throat> and another thing that we like to do is add heavy whipping cream. I think those are going to be good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a tad bit more cheese. That really much. Oh, anyways. <laughs> I'm going to start putting the potatoes on top. Okay, now I'm going to put this in the oven. Since everything, I don't have all the vegetables in it like a lot of people, I'm not really sure how long to put it in the oven. I'm going to start out with maybe like 15 minutes and see how it looks and I think I'll wait and add the cheese like after the 15 minutes if it looks like it's getting to where it should be I'll add the cheese and let that melt and everything but I'll show you all that when I get to it so to begin with we'll set the timer for 15 minutes okay y'all I've had this in here maybe 20 minutes or so I'm gonna sprinkle the top with some cheese I'm going to put it back into the oven for a few more minutes and I also have um, <laughs> some rolls that we didn't use from uh, Thanksgiving. I'm going to bake this and show you the finished book. Alright y'all, I took it out of the oven. It looks really good. We have macaroni and cheese, corn, biscuits, everything set. So I will plate everything up and we will come back and let you okay. know what we think. Bryce, how is it? It's really, really good. Is it good? What about you, Kiki? Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> Here's my place. Yeah, still real hot. The meat, actually, I guess all the seasonings and stuff I use gave it a really good flavor. Now here comes my husband and son, my youngest son, and we'll see what they think. <clears throat> what about them? I already asked them. What do you think? But the mac cheese is gone. Uh oh, you need more? Is it good to you, honey? Oh, he gave us a thumbs up. He didn't give me it. Oh, he said very good. Check my list twice. Most of y'all done. Slave house ringing.